but we welcome all of you. And just a reminder, this has been going on, this service, even before the cottage was built, it started back by Reverend Johnson in the 1930s. So it's continually been here for quite a long time. We want to welcome you on behalf of Dan and myself and hope you stay. We have lots of goodies uh, for coffee afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, Janice and Dan and, and to the McPhails for carrying this tradition forward uh, and all the work it involves and logistics. Um, thank you so much. Um, we're going to reflect this morning on being close to God and what that what that means. It's a little ironic because I feel so very far away from everybody here. <laughs> but, you know, irony is a good tool for meditation. Um, so, and thank you to Joan. I can't see you, but I know you're up on that balcony, Joan and Charlie, for your music uh, this morning. Um, and I want to pre-thank Hallie for joining me at a certain point for some music as well. So, if everybody's settled in, let's begin our worship with a call to worship printed in your bulletins. The kingdom of our God is an everlasting kingdom, and God's dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all God's words. The Lord is gracious in all God's deeds. The Lord lifts up all of us who are fallen. God raises us all who are bowed down. The Lord is near to all who call upon God, to all who call upon God in truth. Let us worship the God who is as near to us as our next breath. The God of life is with us. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God of beauty and God of love, you who bring us into this life and who have shepherded us through this life to this very moment where we sit in your presence in this place, Give us the grace to feel you in the breeze and the sun on our skin. And as we gaze out at this magnificent river that gives life to so many of your creatures, including us, deepen our sense of what it means to be in relationship with you and how we might navigate our lives in such a way that we are in harmony with your will and how you would have us live. And make this an opportunity for us to feel that closeness and to take that closeness with us into all of the many details of our lives where sometimes we might not feel so close to you in the weed whacking and the gardening and the painting and all the chores, but give us the grace to feel you with us in all of those things, as well as in these moments of reflection, where we can just stop and pause and absorb the beauty of your world. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus our Lord. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now, this is a long way down here to this microphone. And if you've got announcements, you're just going to have to shout them. Joan! Yes. Uh, just a reminder that there will be a brief meeting for the um, mission fundraiser at the winery here on the porch uh, shortly after coffee. Get coffee, get goodies, say hello, and then if you please meet up here. We've got a few sign-up things to take care of. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joan. So right after the service, after a quick snack, mission meeting on the porch. Yes, Ross? I want to remind everybody of the grand opening for the museum on July 23rd, 3 to 5. Uh, we've been working on this for a couple of years now, and we're very excited about the opening. And we really hope everybody will join us. For lots of refreshments. So lower schoolhouse, yes, the lower schoolhouse museum. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right on. Two weeks from today, 
you know, keep your hunger for pancakes alive. <laughs> other other announcements for us? I know we want to say a word about the mission, perhaps. Someone might want to do that. Or, you know, our mission um, in Malawi for this month, and um, we're going to take up a little mission collection now. And I think Leah and Lindsay were willing. <laughs> Hi, Leah. How's, how are they, the good seats over there? Good. Thank you, Debbie. Any other other announcements we should be aware of? All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna sing. Um, maybe it might be too much to ask people to stand up. I'm guessing that. So. <laughs> really? Oh yes. So before we move too far away from announcements, uh, I want to just say what an amazing event that turkey dinner was last night. And I see a lot of faces sitting down with a deserved rest for all the work that went into that event. And Lolita. Well, I just want to say, Jeff, Rox and I were collecting the tickets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And how friendly those of us who've been around for a long time were greeting the new people. Yeah. It was really quite lovely. Yeah. Was, that sense alone is a seven by seven. Totally. But um, because we just welcome this opportunity, all these new people coming into the, our our midst. So that was that was a lot nice. Which is what it's all about, right? Like. Yeah. You know, building the fellowship, continuing tradition, making us a stronger community. Um, thank you, Lindsay. And and um, so huge success. I don't know any other way to say it. And, and I just want to say thank you to everybody because it's such a meaningful thing for our church to do that. I know it's been hard. <laughs> and and hope, hope that this yesterday will inspire people to say, like, hey, I want to be more a part of it. Next year, right? Right, Betsy. And Kay. So Betsy Fair and Kay Cole, let's give them a round of applause. For and and the and a whole other team, you know who you are. Really, thank you from all of us. Amen. Amen. All right, are we ready to sing, Joan? Right. All right. You know the song. Every year, shall we gather the river? And the answer is. Yeah, yeah, let's gather it through.
connection with God and who God is and how God works in our lives. And so this prayer that recognizes our movement in that direction, but what holds us back from that. So let's pray together with our friend Evelyn. Let us pray. <laughs> oh, blessed Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, who did bid all who carry heavy burdens to come to you, refresh us with your presence and your power. Quiet our understandings and give ease to our hearts by bringing us close to things infinite and eternal. Open to us the mind of God that is in his light we may see light and crown your choosing us to be your servants by making us springs of strength and joy to all whom we serve. really that we're posing today is whom do we serve and it comes in the form of the gospel lesson that Eric's going to read uh, who is my neighbor and how is it that we can be open to a wide variety of who our neighbors are and who we're called to pay attention to and the nearness the closer we can get to the spirit of God and this, the way that Jesus calls us into a closer relationship with everybody around us, the more we can feel that closeness and nearness, the more we are equipped to see the joy of expanding our communion of neighbors. And, and that uh, is, an, is another way of thinking about how our world might be redeemed by this power of God. And, and so even though our individual attempts may seem small and maybe incomplete because we run out of gas and we're just tired, even that, God says, I will transform your life into my light and your efforts of love into the completeness of love. And so that's the promise that comes to us on this beautiful day, this beautiful river that this beautiful God is leading us, transforming us, saving us, redeeming us. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, now, now you know, we come to these scriptural moments. Uh, and so Dan is going to read first, and then Eric, and then we'll chat about it. That's how it works. You know, that's how church works. <laughs> so, Dan, come on up. Well, you're, it's, it's, but there's some people who are like a mile back, back there. Oh, well, okay. Deuteronomy 30, verses 10 through 14. Moses said, When you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that you are written in this book, that are written in this book of law, of the law, you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Sure, this commandment that I commandment that I'm commanding you to do today, but bye, 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 is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, "Who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us, so that we may hear it and observe it." 
Neither is it beyond the sea that you would say, Who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you, is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Yes, yes, the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Uh, let's see, Eric, where are you? There you go. Here. The word is very near you. So think about that. The word is very near to you. It's not way out there. It's not way down there. It's in your heart and your mind. Right, Eric? Yes. Right Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm blessed to be able to have been asked to read from the Lord's book. Uh, we're going to be in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. This is a parable or story from Jesus. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? <clears throat> what is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Amen. Such an important text. Um, so we're going to see how these, these things fit together. You know, the near, you know, the word is very near you. You know, God is not an abstraction, you know, somewhere out there. You know, what God wants is written on our hearts and in our minds. You know, and are we paying attention to that? And does it have something to do with not passing by on the other side, but getting near to someone to pay attention to their pain? Um, I, all, I keep forgetting to put a, a minute with the kids in the program but <laughs> and I know I went you know I'm counting on Leah especially maybe Lindsay maybe Lindsay's like graduated from this. <laughs> uh, Caroline, Caroline how, what do you think it's a it's a long way down here all right Leah ah, awesome let's go let's sit over here how you doing, Leah? Are you gonna help her down? All right. Yeah, that's good. Aaron's helping his sister. We're, we're gonna. Let's see. Would it be comfortable to sit down here? No, it's probably hot. Is that all right? Excellent. Um, Aaron, you gonna come join us just for just for a little bit? No. I wish we had snacks or something to make it, you know, more appealing, but. Just me and Lily. <laughs> Thank God for Lily. <laughs> um, well, while we're waiting for Caroline, uh, what I wanted to, to ask you about is if you, either of you,
have ever taken a long car trip? Twice? Where have, where have you gone? Do you remember? Athens. New York. New York. <laughs> Where's Athens, New York? You know, like what part of the state is that? Um. Uh, how far? How South many? South of Albany. It's four hours away. Four hours. So four hours straight in a car. Or kind of broken up, maybe. Well, think about think about your experience sitting in a car. And Aaron, I know you guys travel all the way to Connecticut, right? Isn't that where you live? Um, I don't know. Like 30 minutes? 25 minutes? Um, probably like um, three hours, I yeah. think. So it's kind of a little bit painful, maybe. I, I, I'll just speak from my experience as a kid in a car for a long, long time. And there were four of us. I had an older brother, two younger sisters. We're all in the back of a station wagon. We didn't use seatbelts back then. Good situation. Um, <clears throat> so we're kind of rolling around the back, you know, they flattened out the station wagon. But don't try this at home. It's not a good idea. But, you know, we would get annoyed with each other. I don't know if that's, that probably has not, never happened to you and your sister, Caroline, and your baby brother. Probably never annoyed you because they never cry or whine or, right? <laughs> No, not true. Um, I remember with my sisters and my brother, we would get so annoyed with each other. And here's the most annoying thing we could think of to do to each other. We knew it was wrong to like to like hit or scrape or, but we would do this. You know what I'm doing? Yeah. Not touching. You're not suggesting that you try this. But we would do, we would get as close as you could, like, not doing anything wrong, not touching you, but annoying you at the same time, which is the whole point. Um, but it seems like that impulse to know that getting close to someone when they don't want you to get close is super annoying. Um, but we, what we wanted to do here is think about how God is never annoyed at us getting close. In fact, God gets annoyed when we don't get close. And when we think, oh, I don't need God today. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to go out to the beach or I'm going to play with my dog. Um, but you know what we can do as we go to the beach or play with our dogs or play a game of tag or kick the can or whatever is to bring God into that scene and to be close to God. And then the question is, well, what does it mean to be close to God? Uh, Leah, what do you think? What does it mean to be close to God? That's a, that's a big question, but I know you've had big questions in the past. What do you think that means? I think it means that God uh, that you are showing God that you like God. Amen, sister. Yeah, did you hear that, Aaron? Like, you know, don't you think that's right? Like, that you're just showing that you like God, which means that you like to be involved with liking. <laughs> that you think that it's important to like other people, and that enjoying this means you like it, and that you like that it was given to us. So, uh, you know, think about that on your next long car trip. Uh, when you get annoyed, and you want to kind of make something happen, think about, well, instead of annoying like the people around me, maybe I should try to find a way to like them. I wish I had thought about that in the back of that station wagon when we were going on a long trip. All right, well, let's sing a little prayer together, okay? Can, can you repeat after me? Can we do that? Okay, dear God, thank you for loving us and help us 
to like each other and to know you much better. And what do we say at the end of the prayer? Amen! Thank you guys so much for being up here. All right. Lily, you can go back to your seat too. Well, I wanted us to think about ten places. Um, if you know the Celtic tradition, I, I had the great experience of going to uh, Scotland and Ireland, uh, and these Celtic spirituality has this um, sense of what it means to be in a place where the distance between you and God is very thin. And I'd like us to think, and I don't think it's very much of a stretch to think that this spot right here creates a thin space, maybe thinner than usual, between us and the divine, between us and this mystery of what is the power we require to be a complete whole community where there is no division, no sense of judgment about the other, but that we are so close to the essence of divine love that we feel it so that it affects everything that we do. Um, so I just wanted you to think about that notion of a thin place like this. Or maybe there's a place that you have in mind, like a particular spot where you feel complete and you feel like everything is well with the world. And that, and that what it's all about comes together and you just feel it in a particular spot. That's a thin place. So, so think about that as we want to, want to address these two texts. And, and the Deuteronomy that Dan read, you know, it has a lot of legal language, like the law. Like, what is the law of God? And that sounds kind of, you know, boring. Or if not boring, then a little rigid or hard to kind of, you know, get a feeling for. But when the writer says, and it was coming out of the mouth of Moses, like, I want you to think about this law as this thin space that where it's written on your heart, not in a law book, or not in you know, some pronouncement from a legal authority, but something that you want to do because it's part of you. And when that situation happens, that means that the law is very near you. The word is very near you. The essence of God's presence is very near you. And that's um, essential for this walk of faith that we're all on. How do we allow that to happen? How do we allow God's way to be absorbed in us? Um, so let's think about the Good Samaritan for a minute. It's a very familiar story. We all know that the priest goes by and the Levite, who's just, you know, a temple authority, and these are the two categories of people most respected, most admired. They are the pinnacle of the you know, social chain of ancient Israel. And yeah, right on. And these are the people that, instead of getting close to, instead of understanding what the painful situation is, go to the other side of the road. And why is that? I am sure it's happened to you. It has happened to me. Here comes some situation. Don't want to get involved. It's too, I'm too busy. So what do I do? I'm going to make my way over here because don't want to get too close to that. And, you know, let's, that's part of part of who we are that, that like, oh, I don't want to get involved. But that is not, my friends, who God is. 
God's very essence is there's suffering, there's a problem. I am, am at my heart. That's where I'm called to be. Now, the thing about the Good Samaritan story is we all know that the Samaritan is the righteous person. Why? Because we call him the Good Samaritan. But we forget that, you know, the, the, why is Jesus telling this story to this expert in the law? Because he asked this question, you know, who is my neighbor? He's already gotten the, the answer right. What, do I, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And uh, Jesus says, well, you're the guy who knows the scriptures. Uh, you tell me, you know, well, like, to love God with your entire being and to love your neighbor as yourself. And, of course, you know, Jesus is like, yep, that's correct. So go on your way. Uh, you're on your, you know, you got it. But the thing about, you know, being an expert in scripture or in the law, or how it's all awesome. It's like, oh, you think you know more than me? Okay, well then, let's keep this conversation going. Who is my neighbor? And so he tells a story about the priest and about the temple authority from the tribe of Levi who avoid it. But then here's a <laughs> Samaritan. And in case you don't know, a, a Samaritan for a, a Jerusalem Jew. You know, Samaria is outside of this area of Jerusalem. And these are the bankrupt people. These are the people that don't understand that the way of God is in the temple. Like, this is where true worship happens. And up there in Samaria, you, you like, in this outpost, uneducated, hick town, y'all don't get it. We are the educated elite, you know, we know how it's meant to go. So it's not your fault exactly, but you're just wrong. And you continue to be wrong. And so you are just on the wrong side. And this is the guy that Jesus says is tuned in to God because he knows what's required in this situation. Now, it's a, so it's a, it's a in-your-face kind of story to the respectable people. And, and to, to think about that in our terms, you know, uh, it's not like, I don't know, this is my interpretation. Of it. It's not like the Samaritan is um, a drug dealer or a human trafficker. Or, you know, someone kind of at the bottom of the moral chain. But it's someone who just doesn't understand the real, you know, the real ideology that can bring us forward. So it might be kind of like if Jesus was speaking to the Democratic National Convention and would say, um, you know, Bill Clinton, you know, walked by and Barack Obama passed by on the other side. But the Republican came close and helped out or uh or maybe uh you know a pro-lifer you know who's speaking to an evangelical community would say yeah and this pro-choice person is the one who came close you know what i'm saying like or i don't know <laughs> at fenway park uh a yankee fan you know understood the right thing to do yeah, the Red Sox finally won one of those yeah, games, yeah, by the way. But, you know, moving on. Um, how, how do we avoid, you know, these categories that we put people in to say, well, what's important is how close are you to understanding the way of God? How close are you to understanding that it's getting near to someone who is in distress? and not avoiding it because you know people will give you a pass because you're socially prominent and righteous and like, well, of course we understand you were busy or we're not gonna give you a demerit for that. 
but we're also tuned into, like, I'm predisposed to thinking of this category of person as not close to God at all. And what would it be like if we were willing to be that generous to the people we're suspicious of? To say, hey, you, you are a child of God and you are as oriented to God as I am. <coughs> and might we encourage each other to pay attention to the suffering that's going on around us because we are close to God together. And maybe when we're tempted to pass by, rather than relying on our social structures that are going to congratulate us in any event, to relying on the thought that God's desire for us to be close to someone in suffering is what it's all about, and not how we're credited in our, in our social constructs. So that's just something I think about, and I invite you to think about it. You know, how, how do we get closer to this law? Because it, it, it is an imperative for us to pay attention to the suffering of others. And secondly, not to put people in these moral categories uh, with respect to how close to God you are. You know, how might we move forward as men and women you know, to, to get ourselves in a closer position with God so that we might make some headway into this divided, mistrustful society that we find ourselves in. So may God bless us with the, the pathway to a thin place, not only in a beautiful spot like this, but on a windy road from Jerusalem to Jericho where bad things have happened or a situation in a, a lonely place where you might feel vulnerable too, but that if you feel close enough to God, maybe we might be able to come near to that suffering instead of passing by on the other side. Let us pray together. God, we are, we are uncertain people as your children. And we depend on you to pull us close to you because we often resist, because it often feels dangerous or putting ourselves at risk, whether it's physical danger or whether we're at risk of losing some social status. Hold, hold us close to you and, and pull us close to you in some thin space where we can understand in our hearts what it means to have you and your law written on our hearts. Forgive us when we fail, as we do daily, hourly maybe. And give us the grace to renew our desire. We pray all these things with sincerity and, and with our hearts, knowing that Jesus is our anchor and our, our friend. Amen. Amen. Um, so I'm going to invite Hallie to come help me. Um, you know, there's, the, there's a lot of songs about being close to God, um, but just a closer walk with the is one of my favorites, made favorite to me by Patsy Cline. Um, so I thought it'd be cool if we just sing the verse together, and, and Hallie and I will do a little, a couple of verses, and we'll sing the chorus together. The chorus is is printed there in your <coughs> bulletin. We'll see how this goes. So let's let's sing together the chorus first, and then we'll give you a verse. Just a closer walk with thee 
granted Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee, let it be. from all wrongs, I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, let me walk close to Thee, everybody, just stay closer, walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. One more verse. Through this world of toils and snares. If I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but Thee, dear Lord, none but Thee. Last time on the chorus. Just stay closer, walk with Thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Let's continue our prayer in this beautiful spot. And I know if you're in the sun, I think this is getting a little long. So if you, if you want to wrap it up, we don't have to pray too long. But if there are things that are on your mind, that would be part of our the way we would express our closeness to each other and to God. Um, joys, concerns, situations. Yes, Janice. Well, I have a joy. Um, Dan and I are getting on up in years, and it's getting harder and harder for us to do things like many of you know. And I would like to express great joy and appreciation to Kelly and Brian Boyer, who help us so much, and Lindsay and Leah, who also are right in there. They're our river kids, and we are so grateful and blessed to have them as a part of our life. And the second prayer of praise is that we have Beverly Davison with us. Yes. She's way up sitting at the house. Yes. And it is just so wonderful to have her back and, and part of our community. Amen. Amen. Yes, and I... It's so good to see you, Bev, and I know having you here, especially in this place, and I think about Andy often and his ministry here on this island and your family and what a rich tradition and sure hope that we can continue this, but I know, you know, there, that it may not happen again like this, so just want to take this moment to thank you, Bev, for all you and your family have meant to this island. Lord, in your mercy... Prayer. I would like to say a joy to the entire community that helped to bring the, the turkey dinner together because I think that it was a great indication
expression of the service and the power of our community. Amen, Debbie. And I think just, you know, um, what it's all about, like getting closer to each other and to God. So, uh, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I want to take a moment to introduce my good friends way back there on the rock. That's Brian and Susan. Brian and I were really close friends in college, and Susan, the second time grindstone. Brian, of course, is an old hat, so we don't have to. Really. <laughs> Susan, we're so glad you're here. And uh, recently celebrated 40 years of marriage. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy. Here He's lifting up some people who were injured in, a, in an accident that happened in front of their house just the other day. So may God's blessing be upon them. Thank you for that, Lindsay. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Mm -hmm. I think we need to give thanks for this beautiful day and this wonderful location and the fellowship yes. of this special service. So for the location, again, Janice and Dan, and Brian and Kelly, and, and uh, I know there are probably others involved. Uh, oh, yeah. And for the fellowship and the, the way that we can gather here as a church community, uh, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayer. Wow, Leah, hey. Um, you want to come say it in the mic? Because it sounds like it's going to be important. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my, my friend's wife has cancer and she's, and she had an operation a couple, a couple months ago. Mm. What's, what's her name? Sarah. 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 All right, let's, everybody, let's pray for Sarah and her cancer, and I hope that's... It's that, going well. That, She's doing well. So that procedure was helpful, and Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. prayer. Thank you, Leah. Other thoughts for prayer? Well, let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father and Mother and, and Keeper of us all, we are grateful to be reminded that we are blessed to be your children. And we continually dance between forgetting about the joy of being with you and then the frustrations that come our way and the burdens that we encounter and challenges and then we forget that we have this beautiful gift of being your child so keep us mindful that you are with us in everything we do with every relationship that gives us pause uh, every relationship that we celebrate and that gives us life every challenge every day of waking up especially on a day like today, on an island like this. So forgive us when we forget about our blessings. Help enrich us in these days that you give us to live. Keep us close to you. Make our walk one that is close to you. Bless this church community as we continue to grow and to Think about new ways to serve this island community and our world. Make us strong in the belief that as we look to be a part of the suffering of others, that that is when you are close to us. Bless our country and keep us mindful that everybody that we think is against us is your child. 
to move us in the way that we might find a pathway together. Help us to be a part of that reconciling togetherness. God, we pray for all the, the names that have been mentioned and the many more people who are on our minds, situations that are difficult. Remind us that you're with us. We pray all these things in all the beauty of this place, in the thinness of this space, knowing that Jesus is in our midst, and it's in his name that we pray this prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay service and they're going to help us respond to God's love with our gifts. So let's continue our worship with our offering.
as well stand up because we're about done. Uh, I, won't, I won't ask you to sit down again. Can we sing this song, Jim? All right, here we go. Praise God. Praise God. So we, in return, we offer you these humble gifts with the hope that from these baskets they go out from this beautiful place to serve the ones who are in need and who are not feeling the love of this world. And may we leave this place with our hearts renewed to be near those who are in need. We pray it in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 All right, our last uh, song together is Down by the Riverside, which uh, we are. <laughs> All right, you know how this goes, right? Just real, real quick and we'll get some coffee. God lay down my sword and shield Down by the riverside down by the riverside, down by the riverside, gonna lay down my sword and shield. Down by the riverside, ain't gonna study war no more, no more. No, I ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Down by the riverside, gonna lay all my burdens down. Down by the riverside, ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more, no. Ain't gonna study war no more. 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 Study war no more. Last verse. I'm gonna follow the Prince of Peace. I'm gonna follow the Prince of Peace down by the riverside. Where? Down by the riverside. Oh yeah. Down by the riverside. I'm gonna follow the Prince of Peace down by the riverside. Ain't gonna study war no more. No, I ain't gonna study war no more. 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 Well, and instead of not studying war no more, let's take up the study of love and how to be close to those in need. And let's all keep on that little path, not pass by, but enter right into the thin spaces that give us courage to serve one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's get some coffee.